On today's episode, he wrote three books in three years, which is freakish. Ryan Holiday, a publishing superstar. You've got to find what's fulfilling, but then you've also got to find what's stimulating. That's how you feel alive. This guy's about to give me secrets of stuff I can actually do. From college dropout to iconic author. The impediment action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. The way you said it, I think, is really perfect. It's don't deal with the world the way you wish it was. Deal with the world the way it actually is. Inside Quest starts right now. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Inside Quest, where we bring you people and ideas that we hope will empower you. Um, I don't know about you, but speaking for myself, I want to live in a world where deeply passionate people are grinding it out every day to transform this world into something that amazes them. And today's guest is uh, a soldier in that army. He is the true definition of a wonderkind. He wrote three books in three years, which is freakish. Um, and he has inspired uh, myself and countless others with his insights. So please help me in welcoming Ryan Holiday. Ryan, welcome to the show. Good to be here. It's very good to have you here. Yeah. Um, something that you've talked about in the past are books that really shake you. I forget the word you... Quake books. Quake books. Thank you. I kept calling it an earthquake book. No, same concept. Same thing. Uh, so We're your book... Your, yes. <laughs> and your fault lines, sure. in fact. Um, your book, The Obstacle is the Way, was for me a quake book. It really, it really shook me, and, and the truth of that, and these guys can attest to it. So I'm asked all the time, because I swear that my success is completely born of my absolute obsession with reading, Okay. people ask, okay, well then, what books should I read? Sure. So I've created a list that I give out to people. It's meant to be uh, foundational in that it stacks on itself, so the books are meant to be read in order. Sure. Your book, The Obstacle is the Way, comes in very early on the list really? at number three. Um, How and, many books are on the list? Uh, it's probably about 13 or 14 books. And look, those are just the beginning, sure. but those are the ones that I think really develop the mindset for people. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm hoping, I don't want to rehash your story, because I really think there's a lot of great content that's already been done about you and with you, and some of it created by you, uh, that tells your story uh, leading up to this moment. So my goal is to really um, pick up where those left off and hopefully go a little bit deeper. But anybody, if you're interested in Ryan Holiday, uh, just drop his name into Google. Some seriously fascinating stuff is going to come up. Uh, a lot of great interviews uh, have been done. He's told the story very succinctly, very powerfully, so be sure to check that out. Um, so to go back to mindset for a second, I could sum my own mindset up a thousand different ways, but I'm actually going to use a Ryan Holiday quote to do okay. it. Uh, and that is, being trapped is a position, it's not a fate. Sure. And that really is uh, the foundation from which the rest of my mindset is born. How would you sum up the foundational belief that you build your mindset on? Yeah, I mean, well, so that quote comes from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is the idea of like, it doesn't matter what position you're in, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose, it's just you're in a position. Um, and, and I think that is also borne out by sort of philosophy and history and, 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 and an understanding of, of the world. But if I was describing my own personal philosophy, um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, obviously, that's a very central idea um, to it. I, I think I try to think about every day. I try to wake up and work on like what excites me, what like what makes me feel like I'm having impact or I'm sort of fulfilling my potential in some way. So if I'm, I'm thinking about a foundational belief, it's that everyone has something that they can offer the world and they've got to figure out what that thing is and then they've got to make a lot of very difficult decisions um, usually saying no to things that puts them in the best position to fulfill whatever that potential is okay so if you were gonna uh, i hate this question yeah. but it's sort sure. of what we all struggle to ask in a less yeah. than cheesy way if you had to say what the meaning of your life i won't say life in general but um what would you say that is? Yeah, I mean, I, I talk about this a little bit in obstacle. We, the the psychologist Viktor Frankl, who survived multiple concentration camps in World War II, he's talking about. Um, he, he created this philosophy called logotherapy, which is supposed to be the philosophy of the meaning of life, and he says that that question itself is somewhat problematic, right? You're supposed to ask someone else, like, what is the meaning of life? Like, you're asking me what the meaning of my life is, not generally, but we, that's what we do. We go, like, what's the meaning of life, as though someone's supposed to tell us? And he's saying, no, actually, life is asking you that question. Existence asks, asks you that question, and you answer it with 
your choices and decisions and the life you so your life is the answer right so you i i tend to find the most meaning in being creative in relationships with other people and with um to an, to a, to a certain extent like to go to what i was saying earlier exploring whatever potential i have like physically mentally um you know skill wise like it's it's actually it's living your life in a way that answers that question so you don't have to find the words to answer the awkward question right. <laughs> because okay. it's hard right yeah, like it, if sure. if someone could answer the meaning of life in like two sentences like what would be the point of living right like it sort of just handles everything well let's you. find out because i can tell you the answer right now all right the meaning of life is very simple, and I have to credit Kenny Florian. It was a discussion with him. He, he is a uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu jiu -jitsu practitioner um, who, as we were talking, I realized, whoa, you've just given me uh, what I've sort of never had the words for, but now I get it. And uh, since that moment, it's been very clear. The meaning of life is to acquire as many skills with utility as possible and then exercise that utility. So, and I hear some of that in the way that you write, and I don't know sure. if as you hear the words condense like that, if it still rings true, but reading the obstacle is a way and asking myself a more fundamental question, which is, okay, here's a guy who there's, there's clearly meaning to the actions you take. Mm -hmm. That's very clear. So he's written this book for a reason. There is something that he wants to get out of this. Maybe it's just pure exploration for his own part, but you've said that you don't just write for yourself, you sure. write for an audience. So my gut instinct is there's some action you want people to take based on that book. Yeah, two things. So one, in terms of like a general rule, I sort of thought about this more. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got sort of describing their sort of, like what's the answer to life is say, be a good person, do what you love. And those sort of two things can help guide you in any given situation. So I think about that a lot. But when I was thinking about writing The Obstacles Away, it was actually, like you, it's funny that you would call it a quake book for you, because the quake book for me was Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, this book I read when I was 19 years old. I got randomly exposed to it. I read, I read this book, it sort of you know, hits me like a ton of bricks, it changes my life. And I realized that I was in a place where I was willing to pick up a book of philosophy written by a 2000 year old dead guy that most people <laughs> haven't heard of, right? But like, how, sure. can I, how can I continue that tradition in some way? Maybe add what I've learned and what I've experienced. When you say that tradition, what do you mean? The tradition of stoicism. Like, so the, do you consider yourself a stoic? Like as you define it, and I think you define it very interestingly. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think identifying as like a Stoics it seems kind of lame and weird, so I don't do that. But like, uh, like I don't go around like saying, I am this. I think it's better to live that way and try to right. benefit from those teachings. Um, but the, the sort of, st the school of Stoic philosophy, which is something I've studied a great deal, um, is, you know, a history of people sitting down and trying to address the practical problems of life and help other people with that. I was trying to write a book that adds to that um, immense library of knowledge to whatever degree I was capable of. That's really interesting to me. And now you're getting into why that book hit me so hard. So you say about that book, this is going to be a book of ruthless pragmatism. And I thought, it gave me the chills again just saying that. Um, that's one of those things, okay, now, because when I turn to a book, I am turning for lessons that sure. I'm trying to acquire a new skill that has utility that I can exercise. Me too. So if this is going to be a book of ruthless pragmatism, this guy's about to give me secrets of stuff I can actually do. Sure. Right? And, and that really is why I put that book so early on the list of sort of foundational beliefs because of that concept that comes directly from the Stoics, which is, uh, and I'm gonna do a bad job and you're gonna do a great job, because okay. I know you know the words. When you encounter an obstacle, if you stop thinking of it as something that's stopping you and thinking of it as something that you can use, yeah. everything changes. And yeah. how do they sum it up? So the, the, quote, the quote that I base the book on says, the impediment to action advances action, what stands in the way becomes the way. And so what he's saying is, like you and I are sitting, we wake up every day and we try to do something. You try to do this, you try to do that, you try to work on this project, you try to help this person, but you don't control, you only, you control your choices, but you don't control how those choices are received or the weather or any number of external factors. Right. So what you set out to do can always be impeded or um, uh, blocked in some way, or, or that's how you would think if you didn't understand stoicism. And what stoicism is saying is no, whatever these new things are, right? Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm flying here to, 
to see you. My plane gets delayed. I get stuck in this city. So did I waste the day because I got stuck in an airport? Or do I decide my response to this event is going to be what fill in the blank? Like, so stoicism is about filling in the blank of this world in which we don't control what happens to us. We control only how we respond to what happens to us. So the thing that I find most powerful about your framing of Stoicism, and to be honest, after so, you have a, a great way of finding new books to read. Mm -hmm. Read the books that people cite in the book that you yeah. just read that you sure. liked, right? So, oh my God, I read this book, The Obstacle's Away, I'm totally into it. It shook me, I'm rocked, I wanna know who this guy Ryan Holiday is. And then, I, meditation's gotta read yeah. it, never read it, pick it up, and I'm like, this is crap. You didn't like it. Dude, after reading your book, which is way more contemporary, way more sort of how I view the world. Did you read the translation I said? I did, of course. Really? You said you what? must read this translation. You're like the only person that's ever said that to me. Um, <laughs> can, I, can I tell you something? Yeah. They're either being nice or cruel. The reason they're being nice, obviously they, oh my God, yeah, I want to be sure. impacted by what you're impacted. The reason it's actually cruel, your book is better. And I get it. it, yours isn't the origin, don't panic. I totally understand. Like, no one wants to get credit when it's, you're actually riffing on someone else's idea, but you put it in a way that impacted me. And even though I can see, ah, I get how these ideas sure. led directly to the book that he wrote, but I was grateful for your pre-mastication of that concept way more than the food itself. No, that's, that's cool. I mean, what's so unique about meditation, this is why I love it, is you have the most powerful man in the world, which is Marcus Aurelius, he's the emperor of Rome, he's the head of the most powerful empire in the world, the most powerful army in the world, he's literally worshipped as a god, right? And, and what's he doing? Every night he's sitting down and he's writing in this little journal, like reminders about how he can be better, like things he did wrong, things he should improve, you know, ways of thinking. And then he thinks that that book is going to be destroyed upon his death. And he has no idea that it's going to survive right. him. And it, it almost didn't. And so we have this book. So it's like, to me, it's like the only self-help book that's like, was only, was truly a self-help book. Like it was written for that guy's self. Right. <laughs> and so um, you're reading it and you're like, this is amazing. What I was trying to do was say, okay, let's say all the things in this book are true. Right. How do you, instead of just say, instead of me writing a book, like when I was sitting down and thinking about it, it's like, I can't just write a book and say like, here's what this other guy said, it's true, right? right? Like the, I would just say like, read, read that book, right? right, right. So uh, what I was thinking is how can, I illustrate, <laughs> how can I illustrate the ideas in the book to people who maybe don't want to read the original or never have read right. the original in a way that is one, in a slightly more modern context, but two, allows you to see not just like, oh yeah, I, I agree with that, but it's like, if I agree with that, here's how it would play out like in action, in, an, in a context that you might find admirable. Right. Yeah, so the reason that um, for me acquiring knowledge and going back to that concept of self-help and really understanding why Aurelius was um, needing that every night to sit down and practice that and to get better, there's real consequence to him as an emperor to doing something right or doing something wrong. Sure. And by the way, I'm taking the pragmatic, yeah. um, the stoic in fact, um, definition of what, what's right, right? Yeah. What's right is what works. Mm -hmm. So when you have a nation and you have to run, you make a wrong decision, there are national consequences. Mm -hmm. um, on a much smaller scale, it's the same for us here at Quest, right? If I make a bad decision, it'll echo through the entire company. And when I make a good decision, it echoes through the entire company. We're able to accomplish something that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to accomplish. So I'm picking up books like your book, thinking, whoa, okay, this is an opportunity for me to empower myself to pass something on to people, which is why I'm, I hand that book list out like candy, just sure. trying to get people to engage. Um, my biggest problem is how few people engage which brings us to the card with one of your okay. quotes that I want to read here. It's a little right. long, I don't have this one memorized, forgive me. Uh, but this was, this was when you really captured my imagination. It comes from the beginning uh, of The Obstacle is the Way. And it, this was when I realized you had identified a problem that I was struggling with as a business leader. Um, and, and I think the quote will explain why. That thing you dread or secretly hope won't happen. What if it wasn't so bad? What if embedded inside of it, or inherent in it, were certain benefits? Benefits only for you. What would you do? Now, if you'd ended the quote there, maybe it wouldn't hit me so hard. But then you go on. Probably what most people do, nothing. 
And I was like, it gave me the chills again. Like that, oh, that is my biggest sure. frustration in life. Honestly, sure. right? So guys, here's, if you look him up, when you start learning about this guy, there's one thing people talk about all the time. He's this voracious reader. He consumes books. I devour books. That's his quote. But a lot of people read. But they don't do anything with the knowledge. He codifies everything he learns, meaning he breaks it down into these pre-masticated, digestible chunks that he can then hand back to people, right? Which is why I was so grateful for your interpretation of meditations, because the lessons were put together. They were put in a way that I could easily take and implement in my life, and he even gives you context, like, in this scenario, you can do this. Um, and as you really start looking at the problems that hold any of us back, myself, you guys, whatever, this company, another company, doesn't matter what people are, are trying to accomplish, the thing that holds you back People are giving you the answers and you do nothing with it. And that was, I was like, okay, if this guy is getting to this like in the preamble of his book, if you so understand that the problem now that you have to accomplish, and by the end of the book, I really feel like you address that, if the problem we recognize is a problem of inaction, now we're asking the right question. Sure. Well, yeah, I think it's interesting, right? So human beings have been recording their experiences in sort of book, narrative, po poetic form for let's say like 5,000 years. Like Gilgamesh goes back to about 5,000 years. So we have that. So we know that exists. Not just like, hey, we've been recording the important stuff, but like weirdos <laughs> have been recording stuff, really successful right. people, like uh, really smart people, really bookish shy people, like all different sorts of people have been recording their experiences in books. So the way I see it is, conceivably any problem you could think of, like accepting, you know, like how, how do I get this one thing on this piece of technology that was invented yesterday, like every conceivable major sort of theme has been addressed, not just like one time, but like hundreds of times. And they've been addressed in books. And these books cost like at most like $50. And at the cheapest, they're free. So I think it's so weird that people knowing that go like, nah, I'd really rather just try to do it by trial and error instead. You know what I mean? Like, like you're starting a business. Right. People have been starting businesses and having employees and selling products to consumers, specifically like food and nutrition products, for, I don't, what do we want to say? Like 2,000 years? Like, right. you know, an inconceivably long amount of time. And these people have dealt with problems that were so frustrating or weird or whatever that they said like I got to write this down so somebody else doesn't have to make the same mistakes as I do or someone else can just see how smart I was or what right <laughs> there are lots of different reasons yeah, fair but they wrote it down and so and and so I think it's so weird that people go like no I'd rather do it on my own and like and and then other people are like you have you oh you're starting a business or like oh you're writing your own book or oh you're doing this you have to read this book and they're like, okay, yeah, that's good. Like, I will. And then they don't do it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, so, so that's what I think. It's like, okay, just in the case of the Stoics, here you have Marx Aurelius, the most powerful man in the world. He's writing down his experiences dealing with, with power and stress and responsibility at the highest level. You have Epictetus, who is another um, famous Stoic, who was a former slave who was banished and and uh, di permanently disabled by a different, more tyrannical emperor earlier. And he's writing down his experiences dealing with the most extreme adversity and poverty and, and you know, like the capriciousness of fate that you can imagine. And so that's just two of all the millions of books. Those are two. Why would you not read them and be better for them? And, and that, I think, yeah, it's like people say, like, I want to get better. I want to do this stuff. And then they don't avail themselves of the knowledge and information that could make that easier and prevent lots of pain, problems, obstacles, whatever. Right. Still ahead on Inside Quest. Warren Buffett says the, the greatest investment he ever made in his life was in like 1950 when he read this book by Benjamin Graham, who was the investor who then became his mentor. He attributes literally billions of dollars of value to, make, to that book purchase. Inside Quest continues right now.